rotational inertia. Now, you may recall from the law of acceleration that um, if we apply a force to accelerate an object, then the amount of acceleration depends on the mass of the object. So something that uh, has less mass will accelerate more than if we apply the same amount of force to something else that has more mass. So uh, greater the mass of an object, the less it accelerates when acted on by a force. Now, there's a similar principle of uh, law of acceleration when we consider rotation. So with rotation, uh, when we have a force uh, rotating an object, we um, associate that with a torque. Uh, now, the amount of acceleration that we get for a given torque uh, depends on what's called the rotational inertia of an object. So something which has less rotational inertia will spin up uh, quickly compared to something else that has more rotational inertia for the same torque, it spins up more slowly. Now, rotational inertia is a little bit complicated because it depends not just on the mass of an object, it depends on that, but it also depends on how the mass is distributed. And in fact, the farther the mass is from the axis of rotation, the greater the rotational inertia. So uh, let's start with this example. There's, uh, I have these uh, pipes and uh, the two pipes have the same mass. Uh, if you weigh them, they, they weigh the same. Uh, but they have different rotational inertia. The, the red pipe is easy to rotate. The blue pipe uh, takes a lot of torque to um, rotate it. Now the trick is that these pipes, uh, the red one, which is easy to rotate, has lead weights uh, positioned near the center. And the one that's hard to rotate has the same uh, weights, but they're clamped uh, near the ends. So let's look at a rolling what do you want me to demonstration. Shake it, so, like that? shake it like that as fast as you can. Shake it. So, so you see here, now let's try. Professor Cress is easily rotating the head. red That's pipe, fine. but now the blue <laughs> pipe that has and grown a little bit. weights on the ends, <laughs> uh, it's rather difficult okay. for her to rotate that one. Again. Switch again. I can easily rotate the red pipe, but the blue Go. pipe takes uh, a lot more effort um, <laughs> because the blue pipe has the weights on the ends, the red pipe has oh, the weights near the, near the middle. So. And in fact, uh, tightrope walkers take advantage of uh, this effect where they carry a long pole. The long pole has a large rotational inertia and that slows their um, uh, tipping motion. Uh, they can also put weights on the ends of the pole to uh, slow them as well. Let's look at another example here. I have a pair of wheels and the wheels are similar except that uh, one wheel has four metal rods uh, connecting the discs uh, near the center and then the other wheel has a similar metal rods but they're located around the rim. Now if I roll these down a ramp, the wheel with the smaller rotational inertia is going to win the race. So which do you think is going to win? Or is it going to be a tie? Go ahead and place your bets. Well, here's the answer. The um, smaller rotational inertia is the wheel that has the mass um, near the center. There you see it. The, large, the other wheel has a larger rotational inertia. Uh, another similar effect, if I have a pair of sticks and I'm going to have them tip over, uh, the two sticks are similar, but the uh, second one, I've put a big lump of clay on the end when they swing down. Which one is going to hit the ground first or will it be a tie? I can tell you the one with the lower rotational inertia We'll hit the ground first and that would be the stick that does not have weight on the end. So here we uh, we see the sticks 
get ready for it. And... So. So the winner, the one with the lower rotational inertia, was the stick without the, without the weight. Now, um, there's two ways to think about this. The one with the um, uh, lump of clay on the end has a large amount of mass uh, far from the axis of rotation. The axis of rotation for tipping motion would be the, the ground. Another way to think of it is that uh, if we locate the center of gravity, uh, the center of gravity of the first stick is just in the middle of the stick. The center of gravity when we have this uh, weight on the end uh, for the second stick is, is near the top. So the second stick in a sense starts higher than uh, the first one. So of course something which uh, starts higher is going to take longer to reach the ground. We have the same thing with uh, sticks of different lengths. So here I have um, stick which is twice the length of the short one and you'll see that the short one swings down and hits the ground uh, sooner. In a sense its center of gravity is closer to the ground uh, than the long stick and so it reaches the ground sooner. Same sort of uh, phenomenon uh, happens when a character uh, trips and falls. So the, um, the tall character, uh, the adult, would take more time than the short character. And uh, two ways of viewing this, you can either think of the, the child as having a small rotational inertia and so it's going to tip over uh, quicker. Uh, you can also uh, think of the fact that the child's center of gravity is initially closer to the ground and so it takes less time for it to reach the ground. Uh, if you uh, want to balance uh, an object like a, a pool cue on your um, uh, palm of your hand, it's much easier if you have it with the heavy end up compared to the heavy end down. Uh, you might be surprised, but if it's, you have something that is top heavy, uh, being uh, top heavy, the rotational inertia is larger and so it rotates uh, more slowly. So um, it's easier to balance the pool cue with the heavy end up uh, compared to trying to balance it with the heavy end down. A lot of circus acts take advantage of this by um, positioning weights as uh, high up as possible. Uh, it looks precarious, but actually that helps um, make it easier to balance by having uh, the weight as far away from the axis of rotation as possible that increases the rotational inertia. So in summary, uh, the greater the rotational inertia of an object, the less it accelerates when acted on by a torque. Uh, rotational inertia depends on the total mass of the object and how the mass is distributed. Uh, the farther the mass is from the axis of rotation, the larger the rotational, in rotational inertia. And as an example, if an object or a character is top heavy or simply tall, then it tips over slowly due to its large rotational inertia. So hopefully this uh, gives you an idea of how to establish a sense of weight in terms of establishing a sense of inertia. So often uh, giving a sense of weight to a character or an object when it's rotating, what we really mean is we want to give it a sense of inertia or for rotation, it's rotational inertia.